Hello again everyone, this is uh, Sean again with another exciting episode of Teardown Tube. And this time I just got in this in the mail today. <clears throat> it's an old uh, Game Boy Advance SP, but it's the one with the uh, new and improved uh, backlit LCD as opposed to the standard uh, you know, front lit one. It's, it's hard to see with the light on, but you can see it's, it's, it looks beautiful compared to front lighting. But uh, let's get to the actual teardown itself. So first thing you want to do is obviously pull the game out. <laughs> I, I've logged many hours on uh, Leaf Green here. But anyway, so um, next you're going to need a small Phillips screwdriver. Should have one around here somewhere. Be careful because um, this is very, very uh, uh, small screws, so you can actually end up stripping it quite easily. And there you go. You'll notice that the screw itself has like a little retaining clip so that you know it doesn't pop out. Put that to the side, battery cover, and here you got your standard Game Boy battery. Which I've heard reports that if you cut the nubs off, you can actually fit this in a DS. Uh, DSL, but or not DSL, uh, one of the uh, DS models. But um, it's pretty much just your uh, standard run-of-the-mill lithium-ion battery, uh, 3.7 volts nominal voltage, 600 uh, mAh, and that's pretty much it. These are fun to uh, use in other projects. You can just uh, very carefully, you know, you can leave it in the case and all, but you just use like spring um, contacts, little whisker contacts. Or if you're very, very careful, you might be able to solder to the uh, metal contacts right there. But a uh, perfectly small battery you can fit into electronics projects. So I suggest these are dirt cheap off eBay. But, um, you know, does the job. Put that to the side. And now we finally get into uh, tri-wing screw land. Which means it's going to be really, really annoying because if you don't have a tri-wing screwdriver, you can get away with using a small flathead, but you you highly run the risk of uh, of stripping all the screws. So I would suggest getting a cheap tri-wing screwdriver like this one off of eBay. So let's get into it. There's a single screw here in the uh, in the battery cavity. So have to be careful once again because these are very shallow screws. You do not want to strip them. Otherwise, I'll just make your life a living hell. And there is a hole here with what appears to be a screw, but that's really a um, like a cement uh, surface mount pot. Do not touch that. Off the top of my head, I have no idea what that does, but if as I open it, you know, it should give me a better clue. I have opened the um, the older uh, front lit version. I have two of those that broke in one knot. And um, so I, I'm really interested to see what the differences are between the, the uh, two different models. This guy's an AGS 101 and the ones I have at home are I believe AGS 100. Or no, a AGS 001. Sorry about that. And basically go along in each corner there's a tri-wing screw as well as one hidden uh, that's why you have to take out the game cart, uh, hidden under where the game cart inserts. I got this guy super cheap off eBay, of course. <laughs> Can't really beat that. And it's interesting, uh, I'm not sure if the old one had it. Here's a, um, a moisture sensor that'll change colors if, you know, you accidentally dropped your Game Boy in the toilet or whatever. And so that, uh, you know, technicians will know if there's water damage or not. So, let's get all the screws out at once. Oh, all but one. You can't win them all. There we go. And finally, if my memory serves me right, lift straight up. Be careful about losing the, uh, the shoulder buttons here. They're just held in um, with the spring and then like a little, uh, here, a little rod. But you gotta be careful with those. Don't want to lose them. Damn it. I know I shouldn't have taken that guy out. There we go. Yeah, just be careful not to lose the springs or anything. Here's the uh, the little nut that holds the screw for the battery cover in. 
And I'm not going to take these off. They just hold the uh, shielding plate onto the plastic body. Nothing interesting there. It's interesting to note, they pulled the same thing that they did with the Game Boy Pocket and Game Boy Color. I have to still do a teardown for you guys for Game Boy Color. But instead of having the uh, mechanical detent on the switch itself inside, it's just a simple slide switch. There's no friction. Well, you know, relatively speaking. But the switch itself on the outside has this little grooved plastic here that... Uh, matches with a bump in the case itself which gives it that nice clickety clack when you turn it on or turn it off and that's pretty much it for the back case here you got your cart slot and as I said this switch is pretty much uh, let me adjust the light there it's a little too bright there um, your freestanding free switch there uh, nothing too fancy. Here's another uh, water sensor, <laughs> moisture sensor, whatever. And this is interesting. As you insert a uh, cart, there's a little switch here on the side which will actually push in. Um, this is actually for, if you look at a, um, a original Game Boy cart, or even a Game Boy Color, you'll notice that the edges are perfectly square. Now, if you look at a Game Boy Advance cart, there are these, um, these like, insets um, where there's, like, a gap on either side. It's not perfectly square. So that when you insert an original Game Boy game, it'll actually end up pressing this button inwards as opposed to when you insert a Game Boy Advance game, it does not do that. This actually um, tells the uh, processor which cart you have inserted so that it can switch into the different modes. Okay, so let's get um, the rest of the rest of the way is going to be um, Phillips territory, Phillips screws. So nothing terrible there. You got your battery connector, your um, ARM CPU, which is a main processor, uh, Mark 2002 by Nintendo in Japan, and then a BSI Labs. Um, probably going to be some sort of memory devicing, as you can see all the traces going directly to the main processor. You've got a slide volume, uh, like a potentiometer in here, a linear uh, volume control. You got your shoulder buttons, clickety clack. Uh, you got your expansion ports, charging ports, whatever. One thing that really pissed me off about this system, when I got mine, I bought mine when it first came out, a uh, silver model, but um, there's no headphone jack built in. You have to use a stupid little adapter that plugs into the top and hangs off the side. It's just messy and I always hated that. So um, I'm actually planning on taking this, uh, switching out the housing color because, you know, you know, pink's great and all, but it's not really my color. So I'm going to be switching that out um, probably for like, a, I don't know, silver or blue or something. But um, and then I'll uh, modify it so that I'll run a cord to a actual headphone jack with um, with a insert switch so that it can tell when you have headphones inserted or not like the way it should have been designed I think um, other than that not much else going on you got your local clock here for the processor you can actually overclock uh, and I guess potentially underclock though I don't know why you'd want to uh, this this by replacing this uh, crystal right in there and so let's go through, there are three screws, one in the center and two below the cartridge slot that we need to get access to using your flathead. These guys are, are easy, you know, just use a fine tipped uh, Phillips screwdriver. Okay, and be careful, don't just lift straight out because there will be a ribbon cable in there. So, yay, I lost all the buttons. <laughs> yeah, I should have saw that coming, but whatever. And the speaker too. But I'm more worried about this ribbon cable. It's as if, but um, you gotta be really careful. Don't put too much pressure on there and unlock the tabs on the either side of there and then you can just slide out the screen and that's the top assembly uh, the construction for all the buttons is, is actually really simple they're just these rubber membranes and underneath them are 
pretty much standard uh, mechanical surface mount tack switches which gives that the rubber gives the kind of mushy feeling but then there's there's also a definite unlike if you've ever taken apart an NES controller it's a very mushy rubbery feeling this one there's a click to it as well which I don't know I guess it's a personal thing I never minded that but um other than that you'll notice the uh, surface mount LEDs here for the um, charge indicator and then the battery and low battery indicator other than that you have some inductive uh, yeah it looks like some inductors up here it looks like actually these guys are for I would guess some sort of galvanic isolation because you can see the the wires leading up to the um, the serial um, expansion port there for multiplayer so I would assume there's some sort of galvanic isolation because these guys look like mini um, transformers so to speak or you know so that um, it protects each Game Boy in turn from you know whatever the heck you might be plugging it into um, you'll also notice um, this chip right here it's a Mitsumi branded uh, judging from where it is I actually don't know quite what it does it's interesting you'd see some silk screen it says low bat right there so maybe that one of its functions is to measure the battery life but you'll notice also some inductive uh, components right in there as well so oh your guess is as good as mine I, I would guess that it I'm not seeing any because um, the speakers right here trying to see where the audio amplifier is I don't know. It looks almost identical to to the older model Game Boys, I gotta say, but um, just little differences. And also, I think the this is only a 34 pin uh, ribbon connector. I think the older ones are like 40 pins or something. And there is a way to modify. You can solder, um, reroute wires. You can switch screens, swap out screens, and whatnot. But that takes a lot of soldering. But uh, anyway, you have your surface mount pad contacts for the speaker which rests at the top of the case and it has little um, protruding metal pins there that just kinda sit there oops yeah and the speaker is covered with this uh, this material in order to keep dust out but it basically just sits there like that other than that you have your um, backlight switch the original one when you pressed it it would either flip it turn it from on or off this one, because of the backlighting, you can't, it's not trans-reflective in nature, so if there's no backlight provided, you can barely see the screen, so it switches between two levels of um, brightness, like a low and a high, so to speak. But, um, yeah, I'd be interested to see if there's any pulse width um, modulating on the uh, backlight, just to see for power efficiency's sake, that would definitely... Um, help and it's interesting to know unlike a lot of other uh, products I've taken apart everything is labeled here all the test points you know every component has its own number and it's just it's kind of awesome for a hacker because you can then go and you know what every test point signal does you can solder wires in order to modify the system much easier than if you had to figure out everything yourself so that's definitely a plus. I'm happy about that. Nintendo has always pretty much done a good job of, of this. I know, like a lot of their newer, a lot of their products, the, even the uh, Game Boys, the older Game Boy Pockets and whatnot, and even the newer like DSs, the main boards are they're very well labeled, very well designed. And so this is pretty much all we got for this. Uh, so I'll just put it to the side now. Now, I'm not going to be removing the hinge on this guy because I did that, I made that mistake once and it was a pain to get back in. But um, it's sufficient to say, uh, I guess we can go through if you guys want and uh, pull the screen out. There's not much interesting to see there, unfortunately, though, but we, we can do that. Okay, so let me just kind of get my bearings, figure out how the heck. Because this is different, slightly different than uh, what I'm used to. Let me just move all the buttons over. This is going to be fun putting back together. Okay. So, what you're going to need is some sort of fine tip tweezers or a pocket knife. And each of the five uh, 
the screw covers you're going to need to pry up carefully. I don't know, I remember this being easier. <laughs> Probably because this is a newer. Yeah, the adhesive here is still really clinging on there. There we go. Just stick it on the top of my laptop. <laughs> oh man, yeah, these guys are are higher up there than the uh, other ones because they separate the screen just slightly so that the buttons don't press onto the screen and damage it. Okay. Yeah, this video might be longer than I expected. I wasn't actually going to pull apart the screen, but now that I think about it, I want to see how the screen looks compared to... the other Game Boy I have. Just go slow, and before you know it, they'll be out. Just be careful if you're using a pocket knife, you do not want to cut yourself. Get that mistake plenty of times. Uh, you know, when I was younger. This is always the most annoying part. Oops. Oh, well, I'm not using this case anyway, so it doesn't matter if I scratch it up. <laughs> there we go. Just make sure you do not scratch the screen. There we go, and the last one's out. Those are always a pain to get out. So now, once again, fill up screws all the way. Just take out the five screws. Very simplistic construction. Nothing scary, nothing complicated. Better hurry up if I want to get this all back together for you guys uh, within like half an hour. <laughs> Already at 18 minutes and I'm just blabbing about the, the circuit board for a good like 10 minutes there. <laughs> okay. Now you can shut it and lift. The main top. I've seen people actually switch out the colors and so that like the top will be silver and then the main body will be blue and you can do all that stuff if you want but um, basically if I remember this right there should have been a screw somewhere on the underside there maybe they changed the construction oh no it's underneath here yeah so I missed a screw one more screw right here underneath the uh, ribbon the pass-through slot Pull that guy out. Set it aside. And all that does is it holds this little piece on there. And now you can very carefully feed the uh, the ribbon. You have to put it sideways through because the slot's not thick enough. And then you can pull out the LCD itself. Ta-da! And it looks exactly like the old LCD. With the exception that it's backlit, number one. Number two, I believe the back looked a little bit different as well. But you can see the uh, two contact points for the... Uh, it's a little bright here. Other way. For the um, LED backlighting. And you got your ribbon, which is twirled around like that for uh, stress relieving so that when it flips and whatnot, 
doesn't eventually break. You've got like a rubber padding uh, to make sure that it fits nice and snugly in the enclosure. And just like any other LCD, you got your uh, shielding, your back shielding, and then a white middle layer which holds the light box. And then on the very, very front is going to be the, the glass which sits over the light box for the LCD, followed by a surrounding um, metallic uh, can once again to hold the entire enclosure together. And everything is held together by little clips. But you can get in there with your pocket knife and gently unhinge those. And finally, for the Game Boy, there's a plastic bezel on the front. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's almost identical, it's interesting, to the uh, older front-lit version. So let's get this back together here. Uh, pretty much exact reverse. Make sure that ribbon cable's in there nice and uh, snug. And if you wanted to remove the hinges, there are like four little teeth there. You gently push them inward and outward, but first you'd have to remove these end caps right here. Uh, let's see though. Let's get the screen on first. Replace the five screws that we just took out, Phillips. Careful not to over torque them. Yeah, the reason why I have so many Game Boys now, I have, I told you, uh, three of these, is uh, one, I'm gonna, that, that was my first one, the silver um, frontlet one, I'm gonna keep, because that was my first Game Boy um, that I bought way back. And um, this guy, I'm going to also keep, but I'll use this more than the other one, just simply because the back lighting on this is so much better than the front lighting. And, um... Finally, I have one with a broken screen that I'm planning on modifying so that I want to, using FPGA, build a uh, Game Boy to VGA converter so that you can play your Game Boy on a computer monitor. But I'm going to build it into a like an arcade cabinet sort of thing so that it's like an arcade machine, but it'll accept standard Game Boy cartridges, and that would be that would be awesome. But anyway. That's a story for another day. Let's get the speaker back in, in the speaker hole. Uh, all your buttons go back in as well. This is going to be fun trying to remember uh, how all these buttons go. You got your A and your B. B goes here. Make sure it's upright. <laughs> and A goes there. And... I don't know. I can't remember which way it goes, so I'll just kind of... Oh, nope, that's the wrong one, that's why. <laughs> yep. And finally, your backlight button. Start select. And those go on. Pretty much the rubber piece will only fit on one way, so... Now for the annoying part. Gotta fit the ribbon in there. Make sure your tabs fold out. Then you can. Haha, -ha, success. Okay. Now you just lay your piece back down there. And make sure I'm not forgetting any screws because I. I always do that. Take something apart, and I'll have extra screws left. No, I think I'm good. Okay, so then you just reinsert the three screws for the body. Two below the cart connector, one above.
and we're good it looks like then take your back take your top put your top on the back <laughs> pretty self-explanatory then each corner gets its tri-wing in there I forgot, let's reinsert the bumpers in there. Don't want to scratch the screen. I don't know, because I've taken apart a lot of stuff, and I think my favorite screw has got to be either uh, Phillips, if it's not too um, shallow, or more realistically, I really like Torx, because they're kind of hard to strip if you're careful, and they're really robust. But, um, yeah, I just hate little screws that strip, because they're a and you, it's like impossible to to repair or to open it once it's stripped. It's a pain. So anyway, take your battery, reinsert, take your battery cover, put that back on, screw in your battery, and now we're done. Pop in your game, just to show you guys that still works. And as you guys can see, everything is running perfectly. So that's pretty much it. As you can see, it gets brighter, dimmer, brighter, dimmer. But anyway, that's pretty much it. I'll keep you guys updated, um, you know, as on my uh, side projects as well. I'm a little bit busy with school, so it might not be weekly my uh, teardown tube videos. But I got plenty of stuff. I bought old, old gaming hardware, old you know, electronics that uh, I'm sure you guys would love to see torn down. So, um, I'll see you guys later. Turn this guy off. And that was this week's video. Uh, if you guys, you know, like what you're seeing, uh, subscribe, like, comment, uh, anything you feel that you want to add. Um, I'll try to keep doing this, you know. I'm at college, so I don't have a lot of tools I normally would at home, but... You know, we'll see how it goes. I'll see you guys next week sometime. Have fun.